Hey guys, this is Lyndon here for another new episode from Visionary Universe. So today we're going to be um, exploring a little more of the deep parts of After Effects, and that is expressions. So I know some of you have not yet started using expressions, but let me see if I can give you a new picture or a fresh view on expressions. So you know, there's always this plugin you want, whether it be you know, particular, maybe you don't have Element 3D, just whatever it is. But you know, forget about all that because expressions would be compared to like the best plugin, right? So if you're not using expressions, you're missing out on like the best plugin inside of After Effects, and it's like 100% free. So expressions are like the soul of After Effects, or you know, the 90% of the iceberg that's below the water. You may not be able to see it, uh, but you know, expressions are really where the power is in After Effects. So this is what we're going to be creating pretty much, and this is just basically two-point transformation. So we can do the position, scale, and rotation, and everything just by these two no objects or two points. So you know, when I first started After Effects, you know, I wanted a feature where you could control the position, scale, and rotation just by two points. So I was like, I want two-point rotation. Why can I have two-point rotation? Well, when I learned expressions, you know, I learned how to create this myself just by using mathematics and logic and expressions. You know, you can figure out how to do things like this. So this is why. Or this is why expressions are so awesome. So before we start, I have to show you something awesome. And this setup here. So basically, it's just like transforming by three points. So this is really sweet. And you know what I call it? Wait for it. Trinamics. What do you think? Sweet, huh? So you know, it's just like three null objects. You know, I wanted this feature also, like with tracking. And you know, I made this with expressions, and it works pretty awesome. So that's one of the things you can do with expressions. And the base of this is basically, you know, rotation, position, and scale off of two points. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new new composition. And then what we're going to do is create like three null objects. There we go. We're going to call this first one point A. We're going to call the second one point B. And we're going to name this last one information. So I'm going to go ahead and move these points around. Here's the point A and point B. We're going to change these colors, all right? So this is going to make it look sweet and we'll be able to identify these much better. So point A is going to be blue. Why don't we make point A yellow. So there we go. We have um, point A and point B. So the f what we're going to do is we're going to use a JavaScript function to transform distances into rotation. All right. So this is JavaScript function that can, if you give it the distances, it can tell you what rotation it is. So there's actually two distances between these points. The first one is the horizontal distance, where we call that the x distance. And then there's the y distance, which is the vertical distance. So there's two distances, the x distance and the y distance. So maybe you get that concept. So basically we had to find a way to measure these two distances. So how do you use expressions to find the distance, the x distance between this point and this point? Well the concept is pretty easy. Let me kind of do an analogy here to show you what I mean. Suppose there's two points here. There's distance A. Alright. There's distance B. So how do you find you know, the distance between A and B? This distance right here. So basically it's pretty simple. You just take B and subtract A. So you can kind of imagine this here. You have distance A, and if you subtract distance A from distance B, you're left with the total distance. So that's basically what we're doing. We're taking B and subtracting A to find the distance between the two. So that is exactly what we need to do to find these distances. So let's go ahead and go to our information layer, and this is where our, our slider controllers are going to be and everything. We'll type in the slider effect. And basically a slider, if you don't know already, is just a empty value just holds a number or value. I'm going to name this rotation calculator. There we go. So basically, we're going to add an expression to this uh, slider called Rotation Calculator. So hold alternate and click the stopwatch right here, and then you're able to add an expression now. So now we can go ahead and begin calculating the distances. So let's go ahead and open our position parameters, because this is the um, that specifies the position of these two ob null objects. And before I do, start working with expressions, what I like to do is separate their dimensions. That makes it so much easier to work with, so I can easily access the X position and the Y position. And it would just be a lot easier. So remember, to find the two distances, we take one distance and subtract the other. We're going to take the point B X position and do minus point A X position. So there we go. We actually have the distance between these two points. And we, and we always want to visualize our, um, our mathematics so we can make sure we're right. And that's something I found that's really useful to do. You have to uh, visualize what you're doing or else you're going to make errors along the way. So here we go. Let's go ahead and add an expression to this uh, new null object created. And let's just target the... Uh, rotation calculator and the rotation calculator only has the X position so far and so basically this null object is gonna we're gonna visualize the distance between the two so there we go and see the distance is getting more closer to zero and then this just uh, just says, tells us what the distance are so we know we accurately calculated this because when the distance gets closer 
the x value of this uh, null object is less. So we can kind of visualize that we did the correct mathematics by subtracting those two. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. So we're going to go ahead and assign a variable to this calculation we made, and we'll call this x. So x is equal to that calculation we made. And so basically what that means is x is equal to the x distance between the two objects. So we assign the letter x to that value. And then we had to put a semicolon here at the end to end the line of code. So let's go ahead and return to the next line, and then we'll calculate the y distance. So basically the same thing, we'll do y equals, we'll assign the variable y to the y distance. So let's go ahead and calculate the y distance, and basically y position from point B, and we'll subtract y position from point A. So there we go, we have a variable that expresses our x distance, and another variable that expresses our y distance. So we can go ahead and start using these distances to start calculating rotation. So as I promised, there is this function in JavaScript. So that's what expressions are using. They're using JavaScript. And basically it's going to take these distances and transform them in, or calculate rotation based off those distances. So you can access this JavaScript function by clicking this little arrow over here and then going up to JavaScript math and then we can find the math.atan2 function. This is the one we're looking for. So basically it calculates the rotation based off of the y position and the x position. And one thing important, if we name this this variable right here u, we have to go in here into the into this math attend to function and we have to change this to u. You know what I'm saying? Because these this variable and this variable need to match up. Since we assign the u variable to this to this value, the y distance value, then we have to inside the the function we have to make this u also. So if we want it to be y, it makes more sense to be y because it's y distance. We we'll change the variable also to y. So now, there, now it can find the two distances to make the proper rotation calculation. There we go. So the problem is it actually ca calculates radian rotation. So what is radian? Radians are just like degrees, but they're different units. All right. So it's like Celsius and Fahrenheit, or like meters and feet, or days and months. They're just different units that measure the same thing. All right. So radians measure rotation, and degrees also measure rotation. So there's an easy way to transform radian rotation into degree rotation. And basically, what you do have to do is multiply the value times 180 and divide by the value of pi, which is 3.14. Or you can type in math dot pi and capital pi and that's going to calculate a very accurate very precise value of pi so there we go we have perfect rotation see this um, this function calculated perfect rotation based off of our two distances and here's our rotation negative 43 degrees so if you move it like this boom check that out almost 90 degrees perfect so let's go ahead and visualize this we'll create a new solid and then we'll make this width 180 height 100 pixels and then we'll add an expression to the position and then we're going to go ahead and parent this to the to x position of point A. And there's a little problem. We just got to delete these temps right here. And uh, and then we'll just change this to a lowercase p. So there we go. So now this uh, this white solid will be attached to our point A. There we go. And then now, since we already calculated the rotation, we just got to attach the, uh, the objects. Let's see, find the object down here, the white solid. We'll call this object. We'll go ahead and attach the rotation of the object to the rotation calculator that we made. So let's go ahead and add an expression to the rotation by holding Alt, click the stopwatch, and then we'll grab the pick whip and attach it to the rotation calculator slider. There we go. So now, oh, perfect! Calculate the rotation 100% perfect based off of these two null objects. And this is what's this is absolutely beautiful because look how absolutely perfect the mathematics in this thing is. So that is wonderful. So I mean, when I was a long time ago, I tried to calculate this, and this was actually before I started getting into math and learning this stuff. You know, I tried to calculate, and it was so hard. There's no really perfect way to do it without using these trigonometric, you know, uh, functions. So, you know, th that's why it's so beautiful. This is like more beautiful than the visual effects of the Avatar movie. Uh, no, okay. And anyway, so basically, if you want to know more about this math, it's the arctan function in mathematics that this um, JavaScript function is using. So, if you want to learn more about this, look up the arctan function in trigonometry, and you'll you should get somewhere with that. So now we want to calculate scale also, because it's rotating just perfectly. It looks like a table saw. It looks awesome. Anyway, it's rotating just perfectly, but now we want to calculate the scale. So we'll start out by going to the anchor point and just setting the x to 0. So there we go. It starts at the very end of this object here. So yeah, there we have a saw. Oh, yeah, saw. Okay. And then what we're going to do is start calculating scale. So we'll go to the information null, um, null object, and then we'll go to the rotation and just duplicate this, basically. So we're, it's going to be similar to this. That's why I'm duplicating it. So we'll call this scale. Let's see, scale, scale calculator. There we go. So this is a scale calculator. So let's go ahead and go into this by double clicking. 
And uh, let's go into the uh, expression here. And basically, we're going to delete all this last bit because we want to keep these distances. And the scale is going to be based off the distances also because that, ma that makes sense. So basically, if we're using the distances, it kind of creates a triangle. You can see here this is the x distance, the y distance, and the scale needs to be the hypotenuse of this triangle here. It's kind of like a triangle. I don't know if you see the triangle or not, but th there's kind of like a triangle there. And the scale should be defined by the hypotenuse of that in imaginary triangle. So, you know, um, we're going to use the P uh, Pythagorean theorem in mathematics to find that uh, the hypotenuse. So here's what we're going to do. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just follow along. All right. So we're going to capital dot. Uh, we're going to do a capital M math dot uh, SQRT. So it's going to take the square root of a value. So what value? Well, it needs to be X times X plus Y times Y. So X squared plus Y squared. And this is based off of A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So C, which is the hypotenuse, equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. So it's just based off of the uh, Pythagorean theorem. Anyway, it calculates the hypotenuse of the this little triangle here, and that's going to be the scale. So let's go ahead and uh, you know visualize this more. Let's go ahead and add an expression to the scale of the object. Hold alt, click the stopwatch, and then attach this to the scale calculator. So something a little bit cuckoo happens here, and it's, and it's crazy because it's way too big. And basically, we need to divide this by the width of the layer. So if you go to the layer solid settings, you can see that the width is 1,080 pixels. Go ahead and copy that, 1080, whatever. And then let's go ahead and divide this by that, the width. And then we got to multiply this times 100 since it's based off of percentage, because um, percentage goes by 100. So that's why I multiply by 100. Perfect. We're comp Oh, that's awesome. So now we can completely control the position, scale, and rotation based off of these two points. That's some awesome mathematics we did today. Hopefully this gave you some pretty deep ideas. And maybe this, I, mean, I guess this video will be a success if it, if it inspires someone to get into expressions because of these awesome techniques that we can do. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you guys would leave me a like, that would be awesome. And consider subscribing to Visionary Universe. It's been fun. I will catch you in the next video.